I'm here on Trash Arts Talk with Vince D'Amato. How are you doing, man? You good? Yes, very good. How are you doing? How are you doing, Sam? Yeah, I'm cool, man. You know, each day as it is and all that. But yeah, we're good. We're good at Trash Arts. Excellent. Excellent. That is good to hear. That's good to hear. So keeping busy with the podcast, I see. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's been a good couple of episodes now. It's, it's something that definitely feels like it needs to be done weekly, just to keep some sort of weekly schedule. Absolutely, yes, I agree. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good for it's good for the audience. It's also good to uh, to keep that creativity up as well. Yeah, totally. And right, um, <clears throat> right. So you, you're you're like most people know you as one of the the heads of Dark Side Releasing, but you're also a filmmaker. So how how did you get into filmmaking? Uh, oh, okay. Well, that actually that's an interesting question. Um, so my initial uh, real interest in things uh, was actually uh, literature. Uh, I wanted to get into horror literature. I wanted to, to write it. I was really keen on writing it. I you know I discovered uh, Stephen King in high school. Uh, I mean, I always had a little bit of interest in film. Um, even in high school, I was interested in film, but uh, but really, what I wanted to do, I wanted to be a writer, and in fact, uh, that's uh, that's what I went to university for in in British Columbia. And back uh, back when I went to uh, to university for for writing, there wasn't a lot of creative. Uh, like now, you can go to university these days. You can go to university and get. Um, get a degree in creative writing but back when i went uh you know many 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 moons ago um you could not uh you know if you chose to uh take uh, creative writing uh in in university was uh they offered you a certificate uh, at the end for for most of the classes but i took um i took a few classes uh in, in university not not just creative novel writing but also uh some journalistic writing journalistic editing uh that, that sort of thing but n- n- none of those uh courses uh uh, per se added up to any kind of degree which is totally different nowadays you can absolutely you know ubc offers a creative writing program that uh, you can get a degree in and, and things like that so um yeah it's it's it was a bit different when i went uh but yeah that was my first interest and uh so uh really stupidly uh when i was first starting to write i thought oh hey you know i know i know a quick way to make money i'll, I'll write a screenplay first instead and sell that uh you know think stupidly thinking that that you know somebody would some hollywood uh, movie studio or, or television studio would snap up uh, one or two of my screenplays i could make uh, some quick money uh, and then sit, sit around and write my horror novels and uh, that was really how I started and uh, it was a friend of mine I uh, I showed her uh, one of the first screenplays I'd written and uh, she said uh, she said to me why don't you uh, shoot it yourself and to be honest until she said that something like that had never ever even occurred to me never even it never crossed my mind and uh, and she said that and it that kind of just changed everything for me and this was back in the 1990s this was a you know like i said many moons ago it's all all in the in the 90s uh so that's how that's how i started <laughs> so so tell us a bit more about like your first film what would you consider to be the first film that you know the one that you'd say that's the one that's where it started well, sort of thing you, you know it's it, it's one of those like uh you know a lot a, a lot of uh uh professional filmmakers that came up through the independent world even uh, even quentin tarantino you know he says his first film is uh, reservoir dogs when it was not you know no, no. anybody that that knows about his uh, career and uh, they knows he did some other film before that um that he would never show to anybody you know and so uh, of course i'm I, i'm in the same boat i did uh, I, I did a film that we um and we 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 sort of released it uh we we put it out on we printed our own vhs tapes <laughs> um, and uh we sent it out we we did there was about 50 vhs copies of it and it was a movie called corpse orama um that was the first film we actually did and finished and uh it came out on vhs in canada uh, about 50 copies and uh, it went to a bunch of like you know local and independent video stores back in the days when there were such things and uh, uh, and actually I have to say that was a really good experience um, and we did pursue some distribution with it but very lightly you know we had a couple of contacts and uh, uh, very lightly and we had some people that um, specifically there was a distribution company that was 
at the time was doing all these movies called uh, Witchcraft, and they were like these kind of erotic horror type movies, more erotic than horror. And and it, it, these Witchcraft movies are like Witchcraft 1, Witchcraft 2, Witchcraft 3, Witchcraft 4, Witchcraft... And it kept going on and on and on and on. And uh, I have this uh, cult movie actress who uh, we got to know later on in our careers, uh, Tiffany Shepes. She was in one of those films. Anyway... The distributor of those films, um, it was actually, he wanted to help us out. And I remember talking to him on the phone. He's watching this corpse Rama movie, and I'm talking to him on the phone. And he's like, he's like, man, I want to help you guys out. But, you know, I'm watching this, and I see this girl go into the shower, and then and then you cut away. He's like, what, what happened? What's going on? Where's all the nudity? And, of course, we were we were young, and, uh, you know, we, we didn't really, you know, we, we, we were not putting those, uh, those kind of, uh, exploitive or even artistic elements into the film. We were just like keen to make a movie, just any yeah. which way we could. And uh, and he's like, "Yeah, I want to help you guys out, but you're giving me nothing here. You're giving me nothing. You know, more blood, more, you know, more nudity. Oh, okay. Uh, so again, this is back in the uh, God. When when was this? This would have been the late '90s. This all all this was happening. And uh, anyway, so that that was the first one we ever did. And after after the 50 VHS copies, uh, as we started to get more into filmmaking and we had produced and released a few more films throughout the years, throughout the 2000s, and, and started getting a, a small, you know, very, very tiny like fan base and people interested in our work, we started getting people asking about this Corpsorama movie, because it is actually on IMDb. Um, so we started getting people asking about it. So I actually went and did uh, did like this homemade I uh, went back to the original. We, we backed it up on on uh, videotape, you know, as you did back in the day. And uh, so I went back to the master videotapes and actually created a DVD. And I said, okay, limited to 500, and uh, just you know, for people that were interested in it. And I think that that was that was about 20 years ago. And uh, I think in 20 years we've sold maybe three of those DVDs. Uh, <laughs> so <but> yeah. <laughs> But uh, anyway, so that technically the, that that was technically our first film, but the the our real first film, which to be fair, to be to be really fair about it, it really was our first professional film um, uh, because we did we did film it properly. Yeah, it wasn't it still wasn't the best film, but we filmed it properly and we did get professional uh, worldwide distribution with it, which was uh, it was originally titled Carmilla, but uh, it came out uh, via the Asylum and was retitled uh, Vampires vs Zombies. So, uh, kind of in my in my mind, uh, that that is really our first film. That one. Did that uh, start Creepy Six Films, or was that already under Creepy Six Films? Uh, actually, um, it, it started it. Uh, so what happened was, uh, with that, that movie I'd mentioned before, that corpse Arama, we'd already finished the film, and, and we were going to, uh, you know... Was, we got a bunch of like really enthusiastic uh, crew involved uh, that were very loyal and stuck with us for you know ten years while we were making a few of the films and we were trying to think of the name a name for the company and the Corpsorama movie had been an anthology so that's where that sort of creepy six uh -huh. films came from is originally we had filmed six stories for uh, Corpsorama so we just named the company that uh, but the but the actual first legal film uh for that company was again it was vampires versus zombies slash carmilla whatever you want to call it we, we call it carmilla now um but yeah it's definitely better known around the world as vampires versus zombies that that that's how that came out everywhere that was the title in every country every even the uk so uh so yeah it was actually available in the UK for a very long time, very long time. I remember even going back uh, uh, when I lived there for a little while, uh, a few years ago, going to an HMV, and they still had copies of it in oh, there. Nice. I actually took a picture of it with my phone, and then I got shit from one of the employees. Uh, she kicked me out of HMV for taking pictures of their product. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I was taking a photo of my own film. Uh, yeah, some people get uptight about silly things. Yeah, it's yeah, that's that is ridiculous. <laughs> <clears throat> so, from like filmmaking, you obviously have gone on to other things. Now, I am gonna be honest with you; I don't know a lot about this film festival, and I've always wanted to ask you more about it. So, it's a good excuse. Tell us a bit about mm -hmm. Cinema Fantastique Film Festival. Oh yeah, yeah. I, actually, that's um, so. I'll tell you about the name first. Uh, so. <clears throat> 
it kind of sounds like a little bit more of an obvious name, but in actual fact, I I took that name from a misprint uh, in a book called, uh, there's a book called Shock Value. I can't remember the author's name. I think it was, uh, I, I could be incorrect, but I'm thinking it might be Jason Zimmerman, but uh, that's just off the top of my head. Anyway, but the book is definitely called Shock Value. And he was talking about, uh, it's basically the uh, independent horror directors that came um, that came out of the independent world in the 1970s and ended up being like big Hollywood directors. Uh, you know, Wes Craven, Toby Hooper, mm. those, uh, those guys, uh, Sam Raimi. And um it's a great book, and they continually, uh, the author continually referenced a really fantastic magazine, which has long since gone out of print, called Cine Fantastique, and uh, it was a really great movie magazine uh, back in the 90s, and um, uh, there was a, uh, the, uh, either the author or the editor uh, accidentally misprinted the title of that magazine once when it and not 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 throughout the book just just one time they mentioned the mag uh, out of all the times they mentioned it one time it got mis misspelled as cinema fantastic and so i was like oh that's fantastic i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna use that name um because it wasn't you know obviously wasn't the name of the magazine that was just a, a, a typo and so so I, I I grabbed that and uh, yeah we were able to register it here in uh, British Columbia uh, and it's actually registered as a nonprofit and in fact that was how we started that whole thing the whole idea of Cinema Fantastique uh, it's still to this day a nonprofit film festival but um, the reason we started it as a nonprofit in the beginning was actually because we wanted to showcase a lot of classic. Um, uh, Canadian cult genre films, like sort of, um, you know, to, to give a broad idea of it, like it, it would be, say, the early works of David Cronenberg or something like that. You know, I mean, we didn't want to just stick with Cronenberg, but just to give a broad idea of it for the sake of this conversation, and um, and so we wanted to do that, but but our um, our sort of uh, programming mandate was to mix that with new stuff that was coming out because there was all these new filmmakers, and a lot of them were local. I mean, being around Vancouver, you get a lot from Vancouver, a lot from Toronto, a lot from. Montreal, uh, making these really cool uh, Canadian films, and so we wanted to mix the programming up, so it'd be a little bit of mix of old and new. And uh, in fact, the first ever film festival of that, um, it was a retrospective of the Canadian uh, uh, tax credit films, and we did it in London. In London, nice. England. Uh, so the first Canadian film festival we ever did was actually in London, and that that was quite a few years ago. That was that would have been back in two thousand and thirteen, two thousand and twelve, or two thousand thirteen was our first one. And uh, since then, it's all been in Canada. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, we never actually got uh, any support from any of the Canadian Arts Councils in doing that or anything like that, um, which was pretty sad because I thought I thought this would be a really great way to help out uh, Canadian genre filmmakers. Uh, so since we, we the Can uh, Canadian uh, Arts Councils and, and uh, 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 cartoons, cultural organizations were not interested in helping us out um, with that mandate, then uh, then we just, uh, about three or four years ago, we opened it up to just, it's uh, Cinema Fantastic just being an international genre fest. Um, so we do like to still, in our hearts, you know, uh, we like to still support Canadian uh, filmmaking. So still about 25% of our programming is uh, Canadian films and, and local filmmakers, but 75% is all over the, you know, we, we take films from... Uh, everywhere france italy uh england we all, all over the world it's an international genre film festival for sure so from doing the um <clears throat> so from doing the cinema cinema fantastique festival did this lead yeah. to um dark side being born uh no actually um that didn't really have anything to do with dark side at all in fact it was more the filmmaking that had more to do with ah. dark side yeah so um Pardon me, I just took a sip of coffee there. I don't know if you <laughs> maybe edit that bit out. Long pause there while I'm drinking coffee. But um, anyway, 
No, in fact, that came more from the filmmaking. So even throughout the years of Cinema Fantastic, which is still on, I mean, unfortunately, now we've got this COVID thing we're dealing with. So uh, the next Cinema Fantastic was supposed to be this co- upcoming July. Uh, obviously, that's not going to happen. Uh, and we're still going to do it. We just, uh, we're probably going to do something online for the summer and then do the theatrical one a few months down the road. Um, but, of course, we have to wait and see. Uh, however, <clears throat> sorry, a little bit off topic there, but uh, uh, getting back to it, it. My, my point being Cinema Fantastic is still going on and while this is still going on uh, since we launched the very first uh, little film festival in England you know uh, seven eight years ago uh, we actually continued to film uh, to from that point we continued to make films I continued to make films I didn't do it any longer under the uh, creepy six films um, banner uh i i we had moved to england for my wife and i moved to england for about a year um i have a my music composer in italy began producing the films with me so we were doing more european productions and we started doing these very giallo um brian de palma inspired films uh experimental um erotic thrillers uh reversed glass uh odisea della morte which were all shot like kind of post creepy six films so we were still filmmaking then although really we had no contacts uh, anymore in the distribution world you know the asylum wasn't uh, taking outside projects anymore um, we had been back and forth with the asylum for a couple of years about producing like internal projects with them um, none of them really panned out you know most, the most furthest any of those got were screenplays and things like that um, but um, you know and then uh, other distribution companies that we had experimented with like on our the, the last creepy six film uh, to, of the uh, early 2000s called Hell Hath No Fury. We experimented with uh, other distribution companies with that, and we weren't really seeing the same money we were getting with the Asylum. Of course, uh, even back then, even in 2006, 2007, 2008, the markets were changing from the very early 2000s in the heyday of the video stores and things like that. So, of course, we didn't really understand that. We were losing a lot of our contacts in the distribution world, and um, we were not really connecting with distribution companies that really couldn't make us any money so we thought well why bother signing our film and locking it up with a distribution company if we're not going to make any money with them anyway um and then uh by keeping the films uh, organically we started actually getting requests because now by this time creepy six films has had you know three four films out there um now we're starting to do this other series of films um these giallo style films with uh you know with our italian film company and um, we started getting um, uh, inquiries in from uh, from global VOD companies, and so they wanted to license our films, and they were paying a little bit of money. So we started licensing the films off piece by piece, uh, or sorry, I shouldn't say piece by piece. Uh, sorry, that is incorrect. Uh, platform by platform, you know, to, to these various ones. So some we made some good money on, some we didn't, and then, <coughs> pardon me, sorry. Um, and then it all kind of, um, it, it, it really came to a head when uh, we, it, it was really interesting. There, there's a, a, a European VOD company called Viewster, and uh, they put Hell Hath No Fury or Hell Hath No Fury movie up on YouTube for free. And this was in 2000 and, uh, 2011. And they put it up on there for free. So in January 2012, I they put it up August 2011, and, and I only found out about it in January 2012. And then when I found out about it, I made a complaint to YouTube copyright. So then, uh, funnily enough, what ended up happening, how that happened, was they had a contract with our old distribution company, um, but the contract with our distribution company ended in 2010, and we got the rights back to the film. And they put it up in 2011, and they had signed a contract with the distribution company in 2008 for three years with an automatic three-year uh-huh. rollover. So I said, well, that rollover is not legal because the distribution company did not have the rights to the film when your contract rolled over. I said, they should have taken the responsibility to notify you, and they did not, so here we sit. Uh, I said, but I'm totally happy to re-sign the distribution contract with you, but it's got to be with me, and uh, and we'll just uh, – and we'll – Roll it, and and I'll I'll sign a new contract with you, with that and some other films, and uh, 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 they uh, they actually agreed to that. So that that was actually pretty cool. So that worked out in our favor. Not 
was kind of the that was sort of one of the inciting incidents that led me to start thinking about okay so what there might be something to uh, going into distribution but I didn't really know how or what to do with that you know again you know we didn't have a lot of contacts things like that um, I know we we had some films. So now at this point, we've got the rights back to all of our films, every film we've ever produced. Uh, now we've got seven films and we've got, we own all the rights to our own seven films. So I knew we had a catalog of films and that's where, and that's when I really started thinking about it. It was, I shot my last feature film in 2016, Odyssey del Morte. And after that was finished and we finished post-production in that uh, very early in May, uh, sorry, in uh, uh, very early in uh, 2017, uh, March, April, somewhere around there in 2017, it was done. The movie was finished. And I think I got the idea to, okay, I think we can start the distribution company now because I don't have to deal with feature film production right now. So now would be a good time. If I'm going to start something, it would be now. It's either start a distribution company or start working on a new feature film is really what it was. And yeah, so I decided to start the distribution company. And away we went. It started in 2017. Our first market was the American film market, November of 2017. And since then, I have not had time to work at all on another feature film. It's been only the distribution company since then. So uh, going on three years now. That's, yeah, man, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's kind of crazy how quickly it's grown in a really good way, though, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I have to say, like, I'm really happy with, uh, with how everything went. And, and also just so pleased at, uh, you know, it, 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 putting ourselves out there, out there at the international markets and things like that uh, is the thing that has really paid off in terms of... Um, uh, networking with other companies and being very open to uh, collaborating with other companies as I'm not sure if, if um, a lot of people know but uh, you know there was a press release in Variety a couple of months back that we're collaborating with Glasshouse Distribution in the States now um, and uh, of course uh, 101 Distribution um, put out a press release in the Hollywood Reporter uh, last September uh, just leading up to uh, TIFF, uh, that we're collaborating with them on international sales now. And uh, being open to that and, and, you know, meeting, networking with people, meeting these people through the markets and, be, and being open to uh, collaborative aspects um, in distribution, um, I think has really, it, 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 it's, it, it's one of the things I'm, I'm, that makes me really happy when I think about the distribution company because it, it all happened in a, in a way organically. You know, it started with us putting ourselves out there at the markets, you know, getting these offices at the markets that when we first started, we really could not afford, you know. When we paid for the office, the American film market, it was our first market. You know, everything was going on these credit cards. And, you know, I remember I had to phone Visa. You know, I, at, that, at that point, I was, I was still, you know, like, you know, I, I was still doing all these other jobs, you know, like oh, we, wow. we're, we had fully like you know we we didn't start doing dark side releasing as a full-time job until the american film market that was that was when it started it, or you know a couple of weeks before the american film market and that and and that's when it started it's, it's been dark side releasing all the way like though that's you know more than a full-time job now that's for sure but right before then you know i mean we're still doing these other jobs you know and and i'm you know i'm, tr I'm tr i was remember being on the phone with visa because they didn't let the uh, payment go through because it was something it was something crazy like you know six thousand american dollars uh, on this one chunk payment on the credit card and and they wouldn't let it go through and i had to talk to two different uh two different security people um from visa uh <laughs> you know and i remember being on the phone with them for so long that finally this customer service rep they let the payment go through and then this customer service rep came on and said so since you've been on the phone so long and it took us so long to sort this out uh we just want to offer you a hundred bucks <laughs> to, to, you know um, and i'm like i'll take it you know i'll take it i'll take your hundred bucks yeah absolutely <laughs> you know and uh and, and that was like really we started that we took all of our films to the American film market to this office uh, we were lucky enough to have uh, a few friends that trusted us to take their films with us so I think we were at the American film market with 10 or 12 films you know seven of ours uh, three or four five of our friends films our friends features films and it looked like we had a <laughs> you know this pretty good roster while we were there and 
uh, yeah, and like I said, it's been it's been full time ever since, and uh, and things have happened really organically, which uh, which I do love. I I absolutely love it when things happen organically. I have a, a very deep and profound uh, appreciation uh, for that, and uh, you know I do real, realize that we are very lucky to have been able to uh, uh, carve something out for ourselves in this industry. You know, I talk to people. Uh, you know, people that, that we do business with. And uh, like I said, we're going on in our uh, third year. And, uh, you know, I've been told sometimes a lot of these small distribution companies, they don't uh, they don't even last a year uh, when, when they start up. So we've been very, very fortunate. And, of course, uh, part of that, I think, is the uh, the film producers that uh, that have been uh, uh, gracious enough to to select us to be working with us uh, in distributing their films. Um, you know, like the, the types of films that we bring on, I think they do for the most part. I mean, of course, not every film work will connect with everybody, but I think for the most part, you know, we've been very, very fortunate to be working with filmmakers who uh, create films that do connect with audiences um, and they, they can develop their own fan bases. And that's another thing that we're really focused on as well. It's, you know, it's about developing these audience and fan bases uh, not just for dark side releasing, but like really uh, outside of that, it's it, uh, it's about developing these fan bases for um, for both individual filmmakers and producers, uh, but also you know a little small uh, curation of films. Like as you know, you know we're is, is starting out this uh, new uh, British collection, yes. and we've got we, you know we've got a few of uh, Domiziano uh, Cristofaro's films. So we've got a Domiziano Cristofaro collection going mm -hmm. on. Uh, we got two more of his films coming out the next couple of weeks we got uh, you know we've got so we just released the second of your films uh this month and yes. uh, and then we've, uh, we've got a wider release coming out for that and uh and then of course uh three more of your films coming up so uh you know towards the end of the year so yeah that th i think really a thing is 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 trying to foster um uh it's in and, and you know like bring a uh concept and contextualizations to the films for audiences and for fans uh which i think has been really working out it does it does connect and and of course you know i'm a fan too i mean jesus christ uh, my, my, my wife would love it if i if i would be able to clear out the, you know uh, our house but uh it's, it's just it's you know it's filled with all these blu-rays from the <laughs> blu-rays and dvds and even you know i've still got a few vhs tapes i just you know i've got thousands of titles i'm a huge fan and i know what i like to see you know when uh, as a fan when i'm when i'm buying things you know I, I know what i like you know i know what attracts me to buying blu-rays and, and dvds and that's what i like to put out there now and and i really like to make uh, to make sure that the fans feel appreciated and feel uh, special that they're doing things. And that's why we've even started now doing like, you know, the exclusive special features. If you buy the films from our site, you know, at first we started with, you'll get a slip cover and a booklet or, or a slip cover at the very least. Uh, but now what we're doing is we're actually authoring uh, two separate Blu-rays. You know, we're we're authoring ones now um, that if you buy them from the site, you get exclusive features. And the British collection is the first collection we're experimenting with that on. So you know, Day of the Stranger and the Millennial Killer. Uh, if you get them from our website, um, you're actually going to get special features on those Blu-rays that are not going to be on the ones that you're going to get at Barnes and Noble. You know, when it comes out there. And and we and and that's our way of showing our appreciation to to fans that you know that. That, that want to connect with us and that want to uh, come in and, 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 and be customers and be fans and, and be an audience uh, for our films and for our filmmakers that we represent and that we collaborate with. Um, so yeah, it's a way, I feel like it's a, a way of showing appreciation to them too. And because uh, I know I like to feel appreciated, so I, I hope they do as well. This is the thing, man. I've always felt Dark Side shown not just only respect to the artists that they want to get on board, but like you said, to the audience, to the fans. And I think yeah. um, I've seen that so much in the last few days where people have started to get their millennial killer. I had to, and it just, it looks so beautiful. And it, is, it's, it oh, looks like a collector's yeah. edition from a, a, a director of some obscure, you know, being well known. So to see it just done on our small independent films, it's a stunning piece of work. And, uh, and I've always said to a lot of people who always say, oh, what's it like work on Dark Side? Only positive things, because that's all I have to offer. <laughs> that's, uh, 
that's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for that. You know, really, and and uh, uh, you know, I mean, it is it is such a pleasure being able to be in this business. And and I mean, certainly, I mean, I make it sound all, all roses, you know. <laughs> but uh, uh, but but you know, I mean, the fact of the matter is, there are certainly ups and downs. It's just that you know, I do have, like I said, I have a deep appreciation for being able uh, to be a part of this business and to do things uh, uh, that, that others have have done before. I mean, I look to uh, even our, our first uh, distributor, the Asylum. I look to them as great inspiration. In fact, like now that we're back in the business, I, I you know I talk to them. I, I'm back to talking to them all the time now. We always meet up at the markets, and and you know they they did really they did really well for us, and they treated us well. And I always wanted to stick to that when when we started this business back in 2017. I always thought, well, when, when we start this, when we go ahead and start doing this. I want to be able to treat people that the way that the asylum treated us because I, I felt that we got treated quite well with uh, by them, and um, and so you know I just I, I wanted that to continue. I wanted I wanted to look at uh, distribution companies like that or, or companies even that you know have have made some kind of cult movie mark. Um, through their throughout their legacy, you know, like uh, Full Moon or, or Trauma and things like that, that have created an audience uh, for themselves, you know, and and doing it with different types of films, you know, certainly those those types of films that those companies did, and and even the, the ones that the Asylum is still doing, uh, are t- definitely different from what we're doing at Dark Side Releasing, and I like that too. I like that we're you know that that we're able to get in there and find uh, these films and filmmakers that have something different, something different to say, some so different films to put out, um, that, and that we can help them uh, put, put those out and, and, and get them out there in front of audiences, you know? No, totally. And, and the thing is, like, um, so much of distribution, obviously it's there to make money, but there is too much of a drive towards uh, just pure capitalism in that regards. And I think when you're building more of a cult audience and you're, you're paying respect to, like I said, the audience, to the filmmakers themselves... You just show yeah. that you're in it for, like you said, having that collection. You're in it for the yeah. for that aspect, and it's not just about I'm going to just get your film out there. It doesn't matter how it looks, but I'm going to make a bit right. of cash. Exactly, which which is absolutely like ne- ne- never has never ever been part of our uh, of our mandate with how we operate the uh, uh, dark side releasing at all. You know, we always want to give the absolute best we can. Uh, you know, even even when it comes down to uh, you know delivering materials to uh, to video on demand platforms and streaming platforms, we always offer them above like it's always above minimum uh, quality that we give them for those things always you know we don't have to we don't we don't have to spend the time on you know on on, do, on doing things that, that are a higher bit rate that are that are of higher video quality uh, but we do you know and because because I know even you know even if I'm even if I'm gonna pay two or three dollars to rent a streaming video I want that to look the best possible way it can look you know and that's the thing, and that and that's what I want to always give everybody. You know, just I just make sure it's the best, and make sure that uh, that that at least you know when we go back and say, well, was that actually the best thing that we could have done for that? And the answer is yes. And and I have to credit uh, my wife uh, Nicole for always being on top of that too. That is like you know, if if there's anything that's her thing, it's you know, it's quality control. You know, it's always like, are you sure that's good enough? Are you sure that's good enough? Are you sure that's good enough? <laughs> you know, all all. Uh, so you know she uh, she is a huge part of of the quality that that comes out with things you know um, so so that's really you know it's 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 really important to have uh, people around that uh, that that do that are also challenging uh, you for that uh, that have the best interest of the film in mind have, and have no other motive you know other than they want the film to be the best thing it can be, and so you know it's a great to have a person like that to uh, as a as a business partner, you know, uh, working in the company, and uh, and and that's the thing, and and you know it, it, when it gets right down to it, I mean, in, in 
you know, it's Dark Side Releasing is is a small company, and it is it's run by you know it's it's run by me and my wife, and and it's really great to see you know like you go to the markets and you meet other companies um, that are having some really good success, like uh, you know like Devil Works, and that's a husband and wife team, and uh, you know there's a couple of companies from um, from England, and they they're run by husband and wife teams, uh, and and it's really cool to see these you know they're 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 you know they're making a mark in the industry, and they're getting films out there, and uh, they're doing it and they're doing it well and it's a small team like that you know and, and uh, it's really encouraging it's, it, it's an encouraging thing to see uh, when you're starting a new company that's for sure that's excellent man I have one last question for you and um, I ask yep. this to everybody uh, you can answer as a filmmaker or maybe even just on uh, like a distribution of what would be the perfect project for you but if you had a dream project what would be your dream project oh yeah that's easy um, I, I have been working on this uh, erotic vampire horror movie and I want it to be like very erotic like you know like uh, a Jess Franco type thing but I also want it to be very uh, bloody and action oriented so uh, I've been working on this thing uh, and no joke since 2016 but I have not been able to uh, you know get get the um, we were so close we we were we were actually about to shoot uh, the latest version of that this September Oh wow! Around Vancouver, when uh, when this all fell apart, I got involved with a producer who was putting up the money for it, and actually had uh, actually purchased uh, various drafts of the of uh, the script uh, of the script that I'd written. This thing has gone through so many versions, you know. Uh, since 2016, uh, my wife and I wrote uh, Nicole and I wrote a version together. Um, back in 2017 i think of it uh so it's gone th- it's gotten through many versions and many things but but it's never it's never left my uh, consciousness or subconsciousness this is this is the this is the film that that haunts me day and night it uh, it's always with me it's something i need to get out of my system for some reason and i have not been able to do it so um so i don't know now, uh, you know, the, the, I'm still working with the uh, with this uh, other producer, this Vancouver producer. <clears throat> I don't know if that is now going to be the film that we do when we get back, when we're allowed to get back to filmmaking. I'm not sure. Uh, everything will have changed, uh, including, you know, um, some businesses we had even set up uh, for as potential uh, shooting locations. We don't even know if they're going to be in business anymore after mm-hmm. this, you know, we, we don't know. It's going to, we have, we're going to have to start over. Um, so, so, you know, and that's fine. You know, I've got no problem with starting things over. I have no problem. I have no problem tailoring concepts to, uh, uh, to different shooting locations. But at the end of the day is, is the next film I'm going to do, is it going to be able to be this dream project? Uh, I don't know. I hope so. I certainly hope so. But I don't know. But at least, at least there is, uh, uh, at least there's a little bit of hope that I can at least do another film <laughs> in the middle of all this uh, uh, distribution, uh, uh, dis- distribution company craziness. <laughs> so at, at least there's there's that out there for me. So I'm a, I'm, I'm appreciative of that for sure. <laughs> well, fingers crossed, man. That film gets back on track with everything going down. And um, yes. I just want to say thank you very much for uh, joining us. You can check out Darkside's uh, whole entire release on darksidereleasing.com. There'll be a link on the on the screen somewhere, hopefully. Yep, and 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 and, and uh, that's where you get your exclusive slipcovers while supplies last. And definitely starting uh, starting with Millennial Killer and Day of the Stranger, your exclusive special features now. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much for joining us, man. Have a good evening. Okay, thanks, Sam. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.